Hey guys, welcome to the fifth video in the C Sharp Auto Updater tutorial series. In this video, we will be creating the Sharp Update Info Form class, which is going to be the form that will show a more detailed view of the update to the user. Let's go ahead and get started. We need to right click on our project, go down to Add, and then choose Windows Form. Then we're going to name it Sharp Update Info Form and hit Add. Before we write any code, we're going to set up the form with all of its controls. Let's first work with the form itself. We're going to set the form border style to fixed dialog. That's so the user cannot resize it when it's running. We'll delete this text, and then we'll go down here, change the size of it. We want it to be 290 by 283. Start position, we'll choose center parent. Go down to maximize box, let's set it to false. Also minimize box, let's set it to false. And show in taskbar also will be false. Now we're going to add a picture box to our form, so go down to the toolbox and go down to picture box and double click on it. Click on the picture box once, it'll bring up the properties. The first thing we're going to do is change the size mode to stretch image. This will stretch the image to fit the box instead of fitting the box around the image. We're going to change this name from picture box 1 to picture box. We're going to change the location to 12, 12. And we're also going to change the size to 80 by 80. Now we want to import the picture that's going to be in that picture box. So we're going to double click on our properties right over here by our project. We're going to go to resources. This project does not contain resources. We'll click here to create one. Go up and click the little arrow by add resource and go add existing file. And then I'm choosing update.gif. I will have a link to this in the description so you can use it in your own project if you're following along. Go ahead and open that file. That will import that as a local resource for you to be able to use by the name update. Go ahead and save. Close the properties. And click this little button right next to the picture box and go choose image. Then you can click on update and it will put that image in there. That's all for the picture box. The next thing we're going to add is a label, and it's going to display the version numbers of our currently running program versus the updates version. So double click on label from the toolbox. We're going to set all the properties from the property tab, so you don't have to worry about dragging and dropping. The first thing I'm going to do is change the name to label versions. Then we're going to go up and change the font. I'm going to choose, I don't really know how to say this one, Segoi UI, and we're going to make it size 11. The text align, we want middle center. Then we're going to go down here, and change auto size to false, change the location to 104, comma 25, and change the size to 168 by 54. We can also get rid of this text here because we already have it set up. The next thing we're going to add is the rich text box. So go to your toolbox, go down to rich text box and double click. Let's drag that right here for now. The first thing we're going to do is set the back color to control. That's just the same background color of the form. So go up to control. The next thing we're going to do is change the border style to fixed single and the cursor to default. The next thing we're going to do is change the font. We're going to change that to the same one, S-E-G-O-E, -E, and it will be size 9. Actually, I want it to be size 8.25. The next thing to do is go down to read only and make it true, and also go down to tab stop and make that false. That means when you hit the tab button, it won't enter that control. Next, we'll change the name from rich text box 1, it's not very descriptive, to text description. And then I'm going to change the location and size as well. The location is going to be 12, 116, and the size is going to be 260 by 96. Then we're going to add a little label just to label that text box, and it's going to be called description. Just double click on label. So we're going to change the font, same font as all the other ones. And I'm just going to change the location to line up with that text box. So it'll be 9, 100. I'll set the label name to label description, and then change the text of the label to description. And the last control we're going to add to this form is a button. So click on the toolbox, go up to button, double click. Just click once on the button. We're going to change that font to the same font again. We're going to make the text say back. We're going to change the tab stop to false. I'm going to rename this to button back. And then I'm going to set the location and size again. The location is going to be 105, 223. And the size is going to be 75 by 23. There we go. We just set up the form. Now right click anywhere on the form and hit view code. This will take us to the code view. Now we're going to add the code that fills in the form at runtime. The first thing we want to do is change this constructor to take two arguments. The first thing is going to be an instance of I sharp updatable, and we'll call this the application info. And the next argument we're going to take is a sharp update XML instance, and we'll call this update info. Inside the constructor, the first thing we want to do is change the icon of that form to the icon of the program to make it look like it's part of your program. Well, if we remember in the I Sharp updatable interface, we have a reference to that by application icon. So if we go back to this code, we want to check to make sure it's not null first. So if application info dot application icon does not equal null, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to set this dot icon equal to that application icon. The next thing we want to do is set the title of the form equal to the application name. So it'll be this.text equals application info dot application name. And then we're just going to add plus update info. The next thing we're going to do is set the label versions text. So this.label versions 
dot text equals, and then we're going to format a string here. So string dot format current version, and the zero in the two brackets there. I'll show you what that is in a second, and then update version and the one in the brackets as well. Now whatever you put here after this comma as a variable will replace this first placeholder and the second one will replace this placeholder. These are basically placeholders for your arguments that you pass it. So the first argument you want to pass is application info dot application assembly dot get name dot version dot to string. <laughs> That's a long one but that will basically get the version number of the application that you're currently running. The next argument we want to pass it, I'll just put that on the next line, is going to be update info dot version dot to string and we'll close that and that will fill in the label versions text just how we want it. The last one we have to update is this dot text description and we'll update the text equals update info dot description. That's all the code to fill in the form how we want it but we need to register an event handler for the button click event so we'll double click on this back button. All we need to do when somebody clicks that button is this dot close. Now there's one more thing we can do and it's just for detail first I'm going to organize these usings and get rid of everything we don't need. But normally when there's focus in a rich text box that's read only and you press a button it makes a little error beep. Well we're gonna get rid of that. So click on this rich text box, go over to the events tab and find the event key down. It should be under the key subsection. So double click in this box right here by key down and then the code we're gonna write in that is if not e.control and e.keycode equals keys.c then we will do e dot suppress key press equals true. Basically what this code does is if the rich text box has focus and you press a key, it will ignore it unless you're pressing control C, which is to copy that description info. And there you go, you have the finished sharp update info form class. That's all for this video. Hit the like button if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.